Hey guys, it's Tom here from Pro Direct Running, back once again with another video. And in this one, we're gonna be talking about one of my favorite things on the face of this earth, carbon plated running shoes. Before we get cracking, you know the drill by now, make sure to hit that subscribe button and the bell icon to make sure that you're notified every time we release running content just like this. Okay, so let's pick no bones about it. Whether you're a seasoned veteran of the game or just getting started on your running journey, in this day and age, it's impossible to avoid the hype around carbon plated running shoes. Nowadays, every brand under the sun has their own top tier carbon plated racing or training shoe most of which are now in their second iterations with plenty of spicy releases yet to come later on this year. In this video, it's our aim to provide a brief history into carbon plated running shoes, dispel some myths that are out there and really get to the bottom of exactly what role a carbon plate plays within a running shoe, how often you should be wearing them and ultimately find out what all the fuss is about. First things first, despite the astronomical boom and increased frequency of the implementation of carbon, using carbon plates within running shoes is not a new concept by any means. In fact, you have to go all the way back to the 90s to find the first running specific usage of a carbon plate with shoes like the Adidas Adistar Comp and Reebok Graphlite Road. The original theory even back then was that by sandwiching a carbon plate within the midsole of a running shoe would allow runners to move faster and more economically. Despite other brands like Brooks and Zoot having a go, it was due to a combination of factors such as carbon fiber being hard to come by, a lack of resource and inflation of cost to the consumer that halted this innovation somewhat prematurely. Then came Born to Run and the era of minimalist shoes which swept through the running scene like wildfire as did Achilles tendinopathy and calf tears. But anyway, fast forward to November 2016 and Nike unveil the Breaking 2 project. Assembling a team including the now legendary Eliud Kipchoge, Lalisa de Sisa and Zersene Tedese, Nike set out to achieve something that had never been done before in distance running, break the two hour barrier in the marathon. Now, the key significance of this was the introduction of the Nike Vaporfly Elite, a shoe which visually was so far removed from any of the more traditional minimal racing flats that runners were used to at that time. Although Kipchoge narrowly missed out on that two hour barrier running two hours and 25 seconds, from that day forward in Monza, a new era of running shoes was upon us. It would by no means be an understatement to say that the subsequent release of the Vaporfly 4%, essentially a more consumer friendly version of the Vaporfly Elite, was a shoe that changed the running game forever. With that history lesson out of the way, I guess the key question to ask is whether these carbon plated super shoes really work for mere mortals such as me and you, and how would they be utilized in an everyday runner's rotation? To put it simply, what Nike and others knew early on is that an S-curved carbon fiber plate specifically reduced the energy expenditure at toe off whilst increasing the energy expenditure of the ankle which is very good for running fast. But possibly the most important thing to consider is that it's not just all about the carbon fiber plate. And to have a successful, fast road racing running shoe, it requires the perfect synergy of the midsole compound or the foam that's under your foot and where that carbon fiber plate is situated within that midsole. We also need to consider the volume or amount of that foam which is underfoot, which you'll have probably heard commonly described as the stack height of a running shoe. To provide a practical real life scenario, if we take the Adidas Adi Zero Boston 10, it features a carbon fiber plate in the heel, glass fiber infused energy rods in the forefoot, and a dual layered midsole comprising of Light Strike EVA and Light Strike Pro. If you compare that to the top tier record breaking Adios Pro 2, that features a full length Light Strike Pro midsole, carbon fiber infused energy rods in the forefoot, and has a much lighter upper. So although these two shoes share a lot of similar DNA, it is the subtle differences that make a big difference to the overall performance and use case of the shoe. The other very obvious comparison here would be between the Vaporfly Next% Percent 2 and the Nike Zoomfly 4. Now, both of these shoes feature the exact same S-shaped carbon fiber plate within the midsole, 
but the midsole of the Zoom Fly 4 is React, which is a bit heavier, a bit more durable, whereas the midsole of the Vaporfly is Zoom X, Nike's lightest and most responsive foam. Again, the uppers of these shoes are a little bit different, with the Zoom Fly being slightly catered more towards comfort and longevity, whereas the Vaporfly is all about lightweight speed. But it provides the perfect example that just having a carbon fiber plate is not enough to guarantee yourself a top tier racing shoe. One of the unfortunate things about the rise in popularity of carbon plated running shoes is the elitist attitude and negative connotations that can come attached with them. Ultimately, at the core, a carbon plated running shoe is designed to help you run faster and more efficiently. And that's something that every single runner out there can benefit from, whether you're a one hour 59 marathon runner or a four hour 59 marathon runner. Now granted, the vast majority of carbon plated running shoes are not going to have inherent stability characteristics that some runners out there with issues with pronation may require from their daily trainers. I am a firm believer that you should use specific types of running shoe for specific types of running. So you've got your easy day shoes for easy days, you've got trail shoes for running off road and you've got carbon plated running shoes when you want to run fast. So if you're utilizing carbon plated running shoes for your hard long runs, your key sessions in the lead up to races and the races themselves, there is plenty of choice out there. The main takeaway here is that if you're a key runner who's doing lots of different types of running within your weekly training, a varied shoe rotation to tick those boxes and fulfill those purposes is definitely the right way to go here. And if you're looking for a little bit more help to find the perfect fit for you, you can always have a look at our shoe finder tool on our website. So if you've been on the fence about whether or not you should pick up a carbon plated shoe, whether you're fast enough to buy a carbon shoe, I'm here to tell you to go for it because you probably won't regret it. Anyway, that's just about gonna do it for today. So as always, thank you for watching. I hope that you found it useful or insightful in some way. And I'm always interested in knowing what running shoes you're feeling right now. So let me know in the comments down below. If you're looking to take your running to the next level, then you can shop our extensive range of carbon plated running shoes and a lot more at prodirectrunning.com.